Hi, uh, my name is Alex Turner. I'm from Ambitious Management Education Business, based in Liverpool. This specialises in school communications. Now, I'm going to be a wish of stop to how to get your school in the local paper. The good news is that local papers are desperate for lots of good stories. Schools have lots of good stories. All you have to do uh, as teachers is provide them. Is, in other words, tell the local paper. In the next four and a half minutes, I'm going to tell you how you go about that. So, first thing you need to do, identify a newsworthy story. You know, your school will be full of lots of great things that are going on. And I've got seven sort of characteristics there. If an activity or an event or a student that you're thinking about meets one of those, then it's got the potential to be newsworthy. I'll just draw your attention to two. Uh, you for unusual, now it's deliberately not for unique. So, you don't have to be the first school in the world to do something. All you have to do is be the first school in, in your local area. So, for example, I don't know, if uh, St Mary's was the first school in, in Lee to be teaching Mandarin or GCSE in astronomy or anything at all, then that makes it valuable to the Lee reporter. Uh, the second is achievement. So, any time that an outside body it awards a trophy or some kind of commendation or certificate or you take part in you know, uh, something that maybe the Royal Statistical Society are doing nationwide that has newsworthy potential okay. so you've got your story where do you go from then? you have to get your timing right so most of the positive things that go on in school are planned you, know, you enter a competition or the exam results are coming out or there's the uh, Christmas production, all sorts of things. You know when they're happening so you can be ready for them. You need to understand the media's deadlines. So if, if your newspaper, if your local paper is a weekly, it's prob say it comes out on Thursday, it's probably writing its education pages the Thursday or the Friday of the week before. They're definitely not doing it on the Wednesday. And if, even if you've got a daily paper with an education part in it, you'll find that education will often get written two or three days before. So bring that into your planning. Yesterday's news isn't news, so you have to sort of act quickly and make sure that you hit the moment. Okay. All you have to do, easier said than done, is write a press release. You should think about a pyramid so that the important stuff goes right at the top and you add more detail as you go down. You should sell it in the introduction so your first sentence, even if that was the only thing that got printed, does it convey the energy, the excitement, the achievement that was within the story. Use the mum test. So you can assume that most people will know who Michael Gold is. They've probably got no idea at all who Chris Wormold is. So think about who the audience is and the context. Certainly avoid any educational jargon where possible. Be human. The best story is about people. So it's about what your students are doing, about what staff are doing. It's press releases and the stories in your local paper are the place for it, so it's a, uh, academic pieces on educational theory. And think Gettysburg Address. So you know, that was a couple hundred words. You're allowed a couple hundred words more. But if your press release is going over more than one side of A4, then it's almost certainly too long. Pictures are dead important. They, they do two things. They either make a fairly underwhelming story interesting, or they make a good story great. And that can be the difference between get the picture on the front page or on the sort of the blurb bits at the top uh, or it being you know, a couple of paragraphs on page 34. The important thing with the photos is the, of the activity. So I saw one last week uh, that didn't make a newspaper uh, of a student who canoed down the Leeds Liverpool Canal. What a brilliant story, he's raising money for charity. The photo is of the kid in school uniform, stood against the wall. And I said, get him in a canoe. If, if he'd have been in a canoe, and nobody knows what the Leeds Liverpool Canal looks like, it could have been on any bit of water. Then, that's, suddenly I'm thinking, yeah, it's going to be page three, maybe page five, a nice right-handed, big picture, nice story. But because there was no picture to come here, it gets relegated to a small box. Give the paper a choice. They don't know whether they need a portrait or a landscape picture until they've got the page. So don't make the decision for them. Give them the option. Less is more, or the grammar pedants, fewer is better. So you don't need lots of people. If you've got more than about four people on a photo, you've got too many. Tell a couple of the teachers to move out the way. You just need, ideally, yeah. maybe a teacher, if it's a class uh, activity with a couple of students, 
and whatever it is that's going on, whether they're baking cakes, uh, building rockets, football matches, whatever it is. Importantly, you know, this isn't a theoretical exercise to, to be done in committee. It needs to be, you need to get it sent out there. So, work out who your target publications are. So, your local papers will often be obvious. But do think broad. So, yeah. here it might be the Lee Reporter, but it's also the MEA. You know, a little bit uh, west of these lights, you know, it might be uh, the McCoy Star, but also the Liverpool Echo. Uh, target journalists. So, if you've got a local paper, so if, if it's coming out weekly, they probably split up the town or your area into patches and there'll be somebody who's given your area. Find out who it is and send it through to them. If you've got a daily paper, they've probably got somebody responsible for education. So again, find out who it is so it doesn't get lost you know, by just sending it to the to info at address. So you send it to a particular person. That means more probably on the third item, you can follow it up. So if you send it to a particular person, after a day or two, you can get on the phone and say, did you receive that okay? Have you got any questions? Is there anything else I can send? And that's a good opportunity then. They might have a couple of questions that they haven't got around to phoning, or maybe they'd phoned the school and got stuck at reception. So that's really important to follow. And that is a whistle-stop tour. On our uh, website, ambitiousminds.co.uk, you'll find free guides where uh, we go into more detail about how you can raise your profile uh, and lots of other things that hopefully you'll find interesting. Uh, if anyone's got any questions about that or anything else, do my details and we'll be happy to have a chat uh, at any point about what you're trying to do.